Let's talk about the fight itself, Rob and Izzy, and your back and forth over the last um, couple of years. You've referred to him as a on one podcast. Um, where's that, mate? Do you change your mentality up, the back and forth, getting sucked in this time around? How do you approach it? <laughs> so uh, I guess the back and forth between me and Izzy, uh, me personally, I've, I think it's changed for me. I, uh, I think... I think I hated him so much. I, I wore myself out, and I did a I did like a 180, and now I just I don't hate him anymore. <laughs> he's grown on me a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's just doing his thing, and good on him for that. Did you get that wrong in the first fight? Did that was that too much to to take in that headspace? Oh no, I, I certainly got in the right headspace for for the first fight with. Um, with him, I let I let his comments, but it, it was more than his comments. It was I let the the fans and and everything outside the octagon kind of get in my head as well. You know, and I like I think a lot, so uh, I'm, I'm sure I put that on my own head a little bit. I'm sure I got in my own head a little bit too much, and uh, yeah, yeah it is what it is. Do you think they were salty at all that you didn't take the fight earlier on? Of course they were. They want me to be limping, wounded, and half asleep and drunk walking into that next fight. They don't want me at my best. And, uh, you know, I don't think they're scared. The, the word scared doesn't, doesn't compute into a fighter's mind. That's not, that's not how we work. But they know what I'm bringing to the table. They know I'm a good fighter. They know I have the potential to take this. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking for a hard fight. I'm going to get in there and do my job. I'm in a much better place than I was then. I'm a much better fighter right now. I'm a much more complete person than I was back then. So uh, for them not, for me not to have taken that fight on short notice and turn around that quickly, it upset them. I'm sure it did. But um, they would have also known that I wasn't going to take that fight. So, yeah. When you reflect back on that first fight now, you've spoken about not being in a great headspace and uh, not being the person you are today. Um, what would you change specifically around that week and, and what did you take out of it, I guess, from a learning experience? Mate, so I've thought back about, I've, I've thought back to that fight, the first fight with Izzy multiple times, like more times than you can think of, I'm sure. But um, it, it, it's funny, it's a funny dynamic because you asked what I could change from that fight, but if you break it down, looking at it very technically, if you break it down technically, it could change a thousand, thousand things. If you, if you look at it outside of it, what I could change outside of the octagon to impact what happened inside the octagon, there's a thousand, thousand things I could change. But would I have changed those things if I didn't lose to Izzy? You know, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it too much, but I don't want to, I've fallen down that rabbit hole of thinking about things too much. I'm a big thinker. So, um, no, it is what it is. I'm looking to change some predictabilities that I have. I'm looking to exploit some holes that he had, not in that fight, but in, but in fights since. And I just look to get in there and, and, and do my best and give my best and feel like I'm giving my best. Because right now I feel I'm a much more complete fighter. I feel like I'm a much more complete person. So to, to get in there and to be able to do what I want to do as who I am right now, uh, I think regardless of a win or loss, it'll make me satisfied. What you're saying, Rob, essentially, as I see it, is that was almost a fork in the road moment for your career. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a very defining moment in my career because straight after that fight, I took some time off. I had to make some adjustments outside of the octagon, big ones, and uh, that took time. And that gave me the time I needed to, to sort that stuff out. It made, it, it kind of, it was a catalyst to force me to look at certain aspects of my life. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with where I got. What were the emotions through that period, Rob? How did you strip it all back and build it back up again? Um, I guess the emotions going through that fight, the post fight, the, the emotions, it's, it's a bit of a roller coaster. And I guess I had to, to strip it all back, I had to step away from fighting, I had, which I did. I stepped away from fighting, stepped away from training. And I just, 
I just stripped it exactly as I said, stripped it all back. I took away everything I was doing until there was nothing. And all I would do is not settle an alarm in the morning and wake up whenever that happened and then do whatever I wanted during the day. It was, it was a weird space to live in for a while. But then I started adding things that I wanted to do that I felt like I wanted to do. And in doing that, I just ended up just adding a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, showing up at the gym, ending up back at the gym, training because I wanted to having that hunger, wanting to fight, wanting to diet, wanting to cut, wanting to get fit. And, uh, you know, before long, I found myself back in the gym preparing for another fight, you know? And I think that organic rise to that organic, the organic way I found myself back in the octagon, back in the gym, is what helped me define who I was and find who I was. This is becoming a therapy session. <laughs> Bloody hell. Early on in that process, was there ever a moment you thought, nah, I'm done? I know, and that, you know, during the process, there were, when I, when I first, I guess that's the hardest thing, it was the hardest part about it was that I had to take a step left of fighting with the full knowledge that I may never come back to it. And uh, that's daunting because let me tell you, I'm not very good. I'm not very good at much else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to leave to leave that avenue of fighting, it, it was it was it was very daunting, and to, to have that in my mind. But if you don't if you don't completely commit to the process, I feel you don't you don't truly go on that journey. You know, you're dragging your feet if you would. And uh, I'm not a guru or a psychologist by any means, right? This is just what I've, I I did and worked through, and uh, yeah, you know, it turned out alright, fortunately enough. Can you speak, mate, a little bit uh, specifically about some of the changes back in the gym that you've made post that period? Uh, so a lot of little, there, there were a lot of changes that I had to do to suit my lifestyle a little bit more, suit my age, suit my personality. I had to adjust how I was training, the way I was training, why I was training, how it felt when I was training. And, um, you know, a combination of all that is kind of what led me here with the team that I have and with the partners that I have and the way that I train, I, I enjoy it because it's, I feel like it's much, I picked it, I picked it. I didn't, I didn't get forced into it. I didn't just fall into it. I didn't get led into it. I, I chose the way I'm training more or less. I chose what fits with me, how it fits with me. So in that, having that changed my mentality with going to training, leaving training and, and, and different things like that. A big thing is I leave my work at, at the gym now. So when, when I'm training and when I'm fighting, it's just here. And when I go home, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to speak about it. I don't like fighting at home. It doesn't, that doesn't exist back home. Four kids, uh, chaos at home. We see you in the pool. Um, what's the family life and, and how has that been a part as much as uh, getting away and coming back in and building you back up again? Yeah, so the four kids at home. Uh, let me tell you, four kids is, is kind of gnarly. <laughs> I wish there was, there, there, there should be like a user agreement before you have more than two kids, I feel like. I feel like I should have signed a contract somewhere. My wife tricked me. There, were, there, was, just, there was just mumbled words, no fine print. It was, it was terrible. But, but, but I, I love them to death. And honestly, they put everything in perspective. They give me purpose. And uh, they give me something worth fighting for, which is, I feel like, one of my greatest strengths. You come out after the break, get back inside the octagon, rattle off wins over Till, uh, Cannoneer and, and Gastelum looking as good as you ever have. Um, talk about those fights individually and perhaps, I guess, the rhythm you were in. Yeah, so the fights since the loss with Izzy were, they were all an experience, I feel. They, they're all learning, learning curves and, and growing, growing stones. Uh, the, the first fight with Till was, was absolutely, you know, it was, the pressure was there because it was after a loss. I didn't want to be that guy, that champion that loses the belt and then just goes on a massive losing skid. Uh, I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't, I didn't want that to be how, how I went down. So, uh, and as, as well as like that was me coming back with a lot of changes, you know. So in your head, you... Like, whilst it was the best for me, you'd, you, there's always that little bit that's saying, but maybe it's not. Maybe you did it wrong. Maybe you should have kept things the way they were, which is why I was so reluctant to change in the first place. But um, I took the leap, and it was a hard fight. He's a very good striker. He's a very good fighter. And I had a hard fight with him, and I, I had a hard-fought hard win. And then that propelled my growth 
and my confidence in what I was doing into the Cannoneer fight, which, you know, went very, very well. I, I feel like I'm a much more complete fighter. I, I control that fight from start to finish. I utilize much more of my skill set that I think, don't think people are accustomed to. And uh, yeah, I, I had a very first three round fight in a while as well. That was a, bit, that was a big change, it was a lot of fun. It's much, much more fun preparing for three rounds, I'll tell you that much. But um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good, hard fought fight, fight and I, I was very happy to walk away with the win there as well. And then it was Costa at first, and we were preparing for that. Another five round fight, bloody hell, but <laughs> I can't have it all. And then, and then, and then Gaslam stepped in when Costa got injured. And we were preparing for this fight. And again, I feel like the last fight just boosted my confidence in my, my game, my skill set, my abilities, what I could do inside the octagon. And I showed an even more complete skill set against Gaslam once again over five rounds. I showed more of my arsenal, I showed more of my skills and my abilities. And yeah, you know, you've got to be happy with it. I was very happy with it. You know, not complacent. There's still a lot of things I can work on and we're working on them today, but got to be happy with a three fight win streak to, to get back to that rematch. How does this fight being on neutral turf change things uh, this time around? I think this time around, just just me being me, me being comfortable with who I am and, and going to this fight, you know, training the way I wanted to train, doing the things I wanted to do, behaving like I want to behave. I want to fight my fight, my controlled fight. And uh, just, just being able to deliver that is going to you know, leave me satisfied. Izzy's also had a loss since then, clearly, uh, when the move up to, to light heavyweight. Did you see anything in that fight? Were there any clues in that fight into how you might change things up? Oh, I've, I've watched all his fights. You know, it's, um, you try to pick up as, as many little things as you can. And, you know, there were certainly some things I saw that I might be able to replicate that Jan did that, that I, I can do better, perhaps, or, or, or similar to. And, um, you know, and the coaches definitely saw things we can work on. But uh, I'll leave that for a surprise. Johnny Lewis, one of the greats of Australian uh, boxing, uh, coaching and, and everything else. Um, just what specifically has he been working with you on? Yeah, so I've been boxing with Johnny Lewis of late and uh, he's sharpened up a couple of things. He's, 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 he's definitely increased my ability to box. He's, he's got a good head for it, that guy. And um, yeah, no, I've, I've enjoyed the process. I may have a, may have a little secret or two for, for, for easy in the next one. Why is uh, Rob Whitaker a better fighter than the one we saw in Melbourne two years ago? Rob Whitaker is a much better fighter than, than the last time me and Izzy crossed paths. I'm just a much more complete fighter. I'm, I'm a much more confident and comfortable fighter. I'm a, I'm a much more complete person, which I feel just translates into the octagon much better. It, it translates into the approach to the fight. It, it translates into the training and the camp leading up to the fight. And uh, I guess the, the overwhelming thing is I'm a much happier Rob Whittaker, which is a very dangerous Rob Whittaker. And Rob, finally, um, what do you love about the UFC, the, the journey that you're on over the last five to 10 years and, and everything that's, that's gone with it? Yeah, I guess what I love about the UFC and you know, MMA and, and my, my fighting career, it would have to be the lifestyle. You know, I guess my, my, I'm my own boss. I can take holidays when I need it. I can, can move and shift time, so I spend a lot of time at home, so I see my kids all day. I know a lot of guys don't get that privilege to wake up and see their kids, see their kids go off to school, see their kids when they get home, see the kids when they're not at school. It's, it's, um, I'm, glad, I'm just glad to be around and to be able to do all that, to have the freedom I do. But there are days I pay, pay for this lifestyle, and you see those in the octagon, you see those cut days, you see those in days when you're limping off the mats, you know, or when you feel like vomiting and fainting at the same time, you, you, you pay for those days, but you know, as a whole, it's, it's not too bad.